Hello. Hi, folks. We are live. We're live. We're live. Nicola here from Conscious Crypto Traders, and Teresa's here with me as well. Hi, Teresa. Hi, everybody. Good to see you all. And we're just a few minutes, a few seconds early. So we just thought we would pop on and say hi. Hi, Hank. Ha ha. Oh, nice to see, see you. everybody. Oh, hi, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, depending on where you are and when you are. It's nice to yeah, see you all here. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Lots going on in the markets today. It's going to be an exciting, exciting month. Boy, a lot of the stuff we've been talking about that we were anticipating seeing coming up. It's starting to play out, folks. So this is going to be a really exciting month. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So we are going to be looking at technical analysis for Bitcoin, Ethereum, we'll take a look at SHIB. There seems to be quite a lot of uh, interest in SHIB, um, uh, Teresa. Uh, hi, Mark. Nice to, uh, the two world changes. Nice to see you here. And we, we, we are a tutorial channel. So if you're new to crypto, you're wanting to get into crypto, you're wanting to get into trading, or you're just starting out and you want to become more profitable, you definitely want to follow our channel. Hit subscribe, click the bell and click all so that you get notified every day. We upload new tutorial videos and once a week on Wednesday, we go live and then sometimes we go live and prompt you as well. Uh, and we would love for you to like this. This would be awesome. So we're going to do a tutorial today on when to take profit as we're going through the live TA uh, because with this we'll start with I think we've lost Nicola. Sorry, guys. I don't know if I'm still live. I'm hoping, hoping we are. Um, bit of a technical glitch there. So give me a thumbs up in the chat if I'm still live or if we've lost the whole live stream. If somebody can just give me a thumbs up. So can you guys hear me right now or am I off too? Uh, yeah. Okay, we're good. Okay, sorry. For some reason, yeah, we uh, we lost Nicola and I wasn't sure if I was still streaming or not. But anyway, okay, I think we're back. Yep. Can you guys hear us now? Everything's yeah, good? Okay. Everybody, Technology is great when it works. <laughs> yeah, thank you for your patience. Okay, we'll let you keep going, Nicola. We will. We will go keep going. So, uh, yeah. So whenever we've got price discovery, I think it's great to just zoom out and and have a look at how high can we go, uh, because even though we've got, you know, we're, we're coming up into over uh, overbought territory here on the RSI, there are trend reversal signs showing shorts are going in from the institutional uh, institutional buyers. Um, we have a very clear W on the weekly, which is extremely bullish when it's on a bigger time frame. We have room to go here. Here's the green candle here. We've got room to go with the trajectory of the resistance um, that we've been going in in this channel on the weekly. Um, so bottom, and we also have a bull flag on the weekly as well. Right, so this is all consistent, Teresa, with what we've been saying about Moon November, right? November's a best month usually in the bull yeah, run. Or... Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, my favorite paid indicator, the DD BAM, um, is agreeing with this. You know, when when you look at the DD BAM and where the lines are crossing, and um, we talked about this at the Conscious Crypto event. Didi came in and gave us a little tutorial on the on the DD BAM indicator. But when the green candles move above the step line on the margin call portion of the DD BAM, then we know we're in for a big run up. And that's usually when you'd be placing your bigger trades. Well, we just had that on the daily candles. So when we see it on the daily candles, that's a big move we're in for usually. So, 
Um, lots of stuff indicating that we're about to see a really good November. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and if you have a look at the W, the technical target for the W is AD138. And uh, then if we have a look at the bull flag on the weekly, then we have uh, the technical target of 81,900. And I think, Teresa, last week I had said I wouldn't be expecting a really bigger pullback uh, until we reach around about 74. And that might actually end up being 80 seeing a big pullback at around 80. So we could just be seeing small retracements on the way up. So let's have a look at where we are on the daily. We have we have too much bullishness, I think, on the larger time frame. See, look, even on the daily, there's a W. Boom, 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 boom. Can you see that, guys? Yeah, beautiful. I mean, this, yeah. <laughs> this, right? Yeah. So... Yeah. And this is the problem with people who trade the RSI without looking at all the other indicators. They'd see the RSI here and people would start putting, be putting their shorts in for, for coming back down. But if you have a look at here, when we over onto the left here, um, when we came up to the RSI, we didn't retrace that much, right? Yeah. And we don't even know if that's an RSI peak yet, right? Like this is this is a new trader mistake. So I just really want to point this out, right? We sometimes see the RSI coming up and we anticipate a divergence before we actually see the peak, or it might even just be a little shoulder and it's not necessarily peaking yet. Yeah. The RSI is, this is not um, a topped out RSI yet. It's still in the, the main trading zone. Um, anytime it's it's still below the, you know, depending on the color of your RSI, but the grayed out area, um, you probably haven't seen the peak yet. So we got a long ways to go before we see a peak in this RSI. So I'm, I wouldn't be calling this a divergence. I had a couple of people asking me about that the other day. And um, without the peak, no divergence. Exactly. Yeah. So. It looks like it here, but we, we would want to wait a little bit. But also, if it is if it ends up being a di divergence, it's on the daily, and daily divergences can take days before they play out. It's mm -hmm. the divergences on the smaller time frames that can play out a lot smaller. Uh, and again, here on the four hourly, right? Same. We haven't the move hasn't finished yet, so we can't really make that judgment. You'd need to look at the next four hour candle. Ichimoku cloud is is um has got a green in front of us and usually with Ichimoku cloud when you've got the lagging span above the cloud and out of the price action when you've got the green uh, conversion above the red baseline and you've got green cloud ahead of you, um, you then that's usually time to long so within the uh, we, we're above red so we so within the next few hours we could get a bit of a retracement but this is looking bullish Teresa. Yeah, Isn't that's about cool? as bullish as it gets for an Ichimoku cloud. Yep. And the W that we saw on the daily takes us to the top of the range here to 75,500. Um, so we've got lots of different targets there. And one of the tutorials that we were going to have today is when do you take profit? And when you have several bullish patterns with several different targets, this is the classic time to put your ultimate take profit at the very highest of the target, so at about 81,000, but take profits out incrementally through limit take profit when we hit these other targets before that bigger target, if that makes sense. Did that make sense, Teresa? Yep, yeah. 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 So hi, so, everyone. We see there's more people on the line. Yeah. Give us, a, give us a, a thumbs up and a subscribe if you're enjoying the content. Type in the chat where you're calling in from. We just love to see. I see we've got um, uh, Chris, Christian uh, from Germany. Hi from Germany. I know Mark Bernard is up in Canada. Um, so it's just always fun to see where people are calling in from. We've got, you know, Nicole and I are here in Costa Rica, but we've got people all over the world. Um, yeah. So it's really fun to have you guys joining us from all over the world. Yeah, we've got one of our really good uh, fans here, uh, Raz Negas, who always is very complimentary. Very, very grateful for that. So yeah. let's talk about, would you enter a trade here? 
because one of the things we also need to watch out for because we're in price discovery we want to be watching out for top out patterns we want to be watching out for m's we want to be watching out for inverse cup and and handle we want to be watching out for head and shoulders and we want to be watching out for um, descending um, triangles because these are often indications that we're going to be turning around to the downside and the one thing that I would just watch even though we've just said bullish and we're very bullish is that we've got to watch that this doesn't become an M okay so that's what we're watching for we're in price discovery so anything could happen so I'm just going to go over those targets again for take profit ultimately 81,000 then there's a limit take profit here at around 75,444, which is the W on the daily. And then there's the other W on the daily, 79,980 is another place to take profit. But what about entering a trade? Oh, somebody here from Ohio and someone from Holland. Yay. Yeah, um, nice. I've got lots of friends uh, from Holland, which is awesome. So yeah, so, so now if we're looking at entering a trade, uh, now we've had that macro, we want to zoom in and we want to look at the micro one hour yeah Teresa look at this with the RSI there's still room to move here yeah yeah lots lots of room to move on that yeah. RSI and not only that when it yeah. tops to starts to top out above the main trading zone it can stay up there for weeks yeah up you here. know like just because the RSI is there. overbought doesn't mean it won't stay overbought so when yeah. we start to see a lot of hype and a lot of energy around um, a coin and a significant run-up like like it's looking like we might be about to see yeah. don't assume because the RSI is overbought that you're coming right back down right exactly. that's a really important trading principle exactly and not only that if we do come down we might not come all the way down with a big retracement it might just be a dip before we head back up yeah, to exactly. uh, higher prices which is exactly what happened here boom came down a little bit just a tiny weeny amount and then just went back up again and now we're doing the same thing came down a little bit didn't come all the way down to the bottom of the rsi so this is the problem with just using the rsi as an indicator whether to short or to long and you get a lot of people who get their shorts liquidated um, because that is all they're following they're not looking at the at, at you know at the overall sentiment on the chart or what's going on here now um in the uh, in the other um in the patterns or in the other indicators that could also be a bull flag which is very bullish because it is also uh, a rising channel. I mean, a rising channel is bearish, but it's a rising channel as in higher highs and higher lows before we break out. So we've got another take, potential take profit area that you could do. And, and, uh, and that is at around 70895. So here's why it's important to take these limit profits as we're going up, it's because we're in price discovery and we don't know where it's going to stop, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and if you take profit out at the targets, you can buy back in at the retracements, right? Yeah. This is not going to be a linear run up, guys. You all know this and just, we're just telling you what you already know, right? <laughs> Won't be a linear run up. Um, and, you know, as much as people can... Um, indicate what the likely scenarios is based on probability no one can predict uncategorically so you always want to be taking profit as you oh, go and scaling Teresa, out and scaling in you you stop i don't know if you guys can hear me can you give get, give yeah. us a thumbs can you up guys, say can i can you guys still hear us or having a few tech issues today um i can still hear you nicola i don't know did you lose me Give us, give us a thumbs up or something in the chat, guys, if we're still live and if you're still hearing us. Yeah, I think we might have lost them, Nicola. I'm not sure what's going on here. So if you've got any questions, guys, just type the questions in the chat. We'd love to answer your questions live. And oh, Mark's saying he can, we can hear us both. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. We appreciate the feedback. Oh, except now we've lost Nicola. Okay, well, I'm gonna keep going. So when we talk about the RSI guys, one of the important things that we want you to remember is the RSI is a really important indicator to pay attention to, but it's not a predictor, 
Like it's basically just it's momentum indicator. So it's telling you the market momentum, whether the market is overbought or oversold. So when we talk about where the RSI is peaking out and how long it might stay there, um, we want you to pay attention to that. We want you to know that you're at the top of the market, but we don't want you to trade based on it. Is this making sense? Like there's a distinction between the indicators you look at to help you make decisions as to whether a trade is safe or risky or whether you should stay in a trade or come out of a trade or take profit or not. And the RSI is a great indicator that way, but it's not an indicator that in and of itself is a super solid indicator to strictly use as the only indicator on which you would base a trade. So that's the distinction we're wanting you guys to get. Exactly. And we've got Nicola back. Yay. Sorry, Yay. guys. I don't know what's going on with the tech issues today. There yeah. must be like a Mercury retrograde or something going on. No, there isn't. <laughs> no more retrograde. Um, yeah. So okay. I'm going to put in the fibs so that we can see how high could this go. And I'm going to do it from the previous all time high just so we can see what the resistance is above us. And I'm going to come down here to see if you can still get into this trade if you are interested if you are interested in longing this um i mean if you oops if you didn't want to miss out on a potential moon what i will do is i'll just put in a small position with small leverage like 2 to 3x with a buy order no no uh, uh, buy order down at the uh, support levels underneath in case we get a sudden retracement but look at this this is what i wanted to show teresa we have come above this uh, line here, the Fibonacci. Uh, You're not showing um, one... your screen anymore, Nicholas. So we need you to share your screen so we can see oh. the chart. Yeah. Oh, I thought there I was sharing my screen. I don't okay. think so. I'm not seeing it here. So there we okay. go. Here we go. So yeah. Uh, yeah, so if we cut, we've got the Fibonacci levels to see where we're at. We're sitting right on the support level. So the next, uh, then we'll, we'll go and have a look on the one hour because normally you would enter at support and exit at resistance. But what's really important about this is that this daily candle has come in to the golden ratio zone and the golden ratio zone is sitting up here at around uh, 90,254. So we could scooch on up there. Like if we get a retracement, we could scooch on up here. So we could just wick, like we could keep trading and trading and trading and wick all the way up here and then come straight back down again and still be within this zone, this red uh, channel zone. Does that make sense? So we might not break up above this, but we might trade above it. So if you're wanting to get into a trade, this is what I would do. Obviously, you've got to do your own research. This is not advice all that important thing, right? We're just training you to how to think and, and look at it. But Ichimoku is really bullish. So what we want to do is we want to come down on the four hour, one hour to see if we have a trade here. Um, but this is big. We are in the territory of the golden ratio. So mm -hmm. that means that there's not much resistance above us, right? Except for this resistance zone there. So if we come down into the four hour and see where would we look for a position, Ichimoku is going on a on an incline on the on the um, four hourly, um, so that is the uh, t around about the twelfth of November. So that's interesting. So now let's come down into the one hour. Oh look, here's a cup and handle as well. There's another bullish pattern. Can everybody see that? Cup, handle, and then. Yeah. This is how we get lines on the chart and it starts to look a bit busy, guys, is because this just, to me, this just really helps. Uh, so you just have to train yourself to be able to distinguish between all these lines. So look, there's confluence here. There's confluence that we're heading to 75,000, maybe. Yeah, that's going to be a really important level to watch then. Yeah. When you've got multiple patterns breaking out that all target in and around the same level, yeah, um, that would be a key level to take some profit because we'll likely yeah. get a retracement. We hit that level. You can scale back in when it retraces. So this is what I would do. I'm already in this trade and I've taken profits and I'm just sitting at the end of it, uh, at the end of the trade uh, allocation, looking at whether or not to add to it. 
Um, so I am, this is not a resistance zone, by the way, I'm just going to take that out. That is just a, a measurement. So uh, we have a, we have a, a bull flag. Now, everything aside, a bull flag is a bullish pattern that breaks to the upside more often than it breaks to the downside. When it breaks up, comes back down, retests that previous resistance line of support, comes back up and surpasses the, um, uh, the first breakout with a clear green candle above it. That is the conservative approach to entering into a trade. That's what Chris from MM Crypto does. He always waits, well, not always, he waits for that confirmation that we've got volume as well with room to move on the RSI so that we know that we're going into a trade and we're going to move away from your entry price into profit really quickly and not turn around and roll over and come back down. If you trade the breakout, as in as soon as we had a clear green candle above this line here and you get in on that breakout, there's always that chance that we could roll over and come back down into a loss. And that's really important for you um, to remember. However, since we're in price discovery, who knows? And I know that FOMO, people want to FOMO in. So if you do want to FOMO in and you do want to trade um, this, you could wait for the, the retracement down to the support level. And when we bounce off of the support level again, uh, is that a gravestone doji candle yes. there? Yeah, it is. You're the candle expert, right? Um, yeah. So one and a really important thing to remember when we're trading a, um, a bull flag is the longer the bull flag goes sideways, mm -hmm. the less likely it is to break upward. Mm -hmm. So the, the longer it gets, the more likely it is a Bart Simpson, which, yeah, you know, cool. a Bart Simpson is basically when you go up sideways and back down. So that's just something to keep in mind. And that's why a lot of people don't trade them until they get the clear breakout because yeah. a bull flag can turn into a Bart Simpson. Exactly. But the probability increases. Like as soon as the top of the head starts getting longer than the pole, then what we might be turning into a Barb, Bart Simpson and the probability of the upward breakout starts to decrease with each new candle. Yeah. So. Somebody's asking about dot. We can look at dot after we do Ethereum. Okay. Um, that sounds so, great. Uh, yeah, but here's the other deal with these. These can go on and on and on and then not become a bull flag anymore and become an upward channel, in which case the chances of that breaking down obviously are higher. Um, so if we do keep trading up here, then you miss out on this trade. What I have done in the past, and again, you want to consider this for yourself, is I'll get in, like if we get a touch point on the support, is I'll get in with a small trade, low leverage, and another buy order in at the next support level or the next Fibonacci uh, golden ratio level so that um, I buy in and I dollar cost average into the trade just so I'm, in a position, I've got skin in the game, and if it goes up, I'm in and I can add to it. But if it goes down, I can just dollar cost average down into the long. And that's why you want to have really low leverage so that you don't get liquidated out before you know it goes down to those structured lows. And we teach a lot of this in our Discord server. So make sure you go to Discord and you look up Conscious Crypto and you join our Discord server and look, watch our daily technical analysis there. Oh, Teresa, by the way, we were going to say, we're now with Buy Me A Coffee. Yes. So if you love us and you really appreciate the effort we put into bringing this to you, uh, you can buy us a cup of coffee. And you do that through the Buy Me A Coffee app. We've got a link on our banner on our YouTube channel, as well as a link right at the bottom below in the description area here. So that, that's kind of it for Bitcoin, right? Those are the two places that you can get in. Wait for a little bit of a retracement and then uh, or, or trade the breakout um, with a smaller trade because, uh, and then, you know, you can always jump in with a market buy order to add to the trade if it takes off. Um, so anything else we want to say on Bitcoin before we go to Ethereum? We're going to go to DOT and we're going to do Shiba Inu as well. There's a question in the chat from uh, Henke Vinky. I'm probably saying your name wrong. My Henke apologies. Yep. Um, about the leverage and how to calculate your stop loss tool or using your stop loss to calculate your leverage. So I'm going to put a link in the chat 
um, to a playlist we have that has various videos on that topic, including um, a video on how to use that spreadsheet. So let us know next week if what you were looking for was in there. And if not, we can get you some more videos on that. Yeah. 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 We also have a very big detailed um, uh, tutorial on that in the masterclass series that was the recordings from the Conscious Crypto event we did in October. So the three days of, you know, um, tutorials with MM Crypto, DaVinci J15, Blockchain Today, Didi Taihutu from the Bitcoin family, a whole lot of tax planning stuff with Offshore Citizen and, and some mindset as well. If you want to get the recordings of the event because you couldn't come to the event itself, uh, there is a detailed uh, one hour tutorial on, on how to do that in there. And you can go over to that at theconsciouscryptoevent.com. Again, the link for that is below um, this live stream. And by the way, thank you to all of you who um, not only came to the event, but have subsequently bought the recordings. Um, we just, we managed to get quite a bit more road paving done down here in Costa Rica. We're paving roads for the local community, which really supports the economy. So we just want to say thank you guys again for the give back to the community because um, a lot of people are really appreciating that. Yeah. So let's have a look at Ethereum then, Dot, then Shiba. Um, so if you look at the RSI immediately down the bottom here, this is the classic example of what we've been saying about the RSI. This is on the weekly for Ethereum. And we've been traveling in the overbought territory for weeks. So again, just because you see us above here doesn't mean to say we can't hang around there for a while. We also have an upward channel. So it's possible that uh, 1912 could be where we end up coming down to at the very bottom for the bear market when we, when we uh, come down. Uh, but we've got a W here. And we're right up against resistance right now, right? So I am now out of this trade looking to get back in for the... Um, the retrace because we're hanging around there. Uh, that W is going to take us to 7,050, but we might be coming down here, you know, and taking a few months to get there. Or it's, you know, it is always possible that we could just break out there um, and, and break this pattern. That's true, but this is a bearish pattern as in it breaks to the downside more often than it breaks to the upside. We have been spending much of our trading time though above it and above the golden ratio, the first golden ratio here. This is a really nice support area at around just over 3,000. Uh, we've got a, re a potential retracement area down here at 38.39. Um, but let's have a look at that. Um, thanks, Mark. Mark says worth getting the recordings. Mark was at the live event, so he knows how... How, yeah, thanks for all the great comments, guys. It's really how uh, valuable that is. I mean, it's a really good investment in yourself and in, in your life changing wealth. Look at this too, Teresa. We have been traveling up here in an ascending wedge, which again is bearish, breaks down to the candle. So a good position of entry might be, um, you know, putting in a cheeky buy order at around 3,600. Uh, 3,600 or 3,360. Those two areas are where I've got cheeky buy orders in. Um, yeah, Ethereum loves to trade in channels. That, that's yeah. like a characteristic of this coin. And that, like, that's just such a beautiful upward channel right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, so we might just see that one keep going for some time if, uh, yeah. if the market momentum continues. Because again, the RSI you know, is not in the overbought zone yet. So we've got room to move on the RSI, right? We do. So, yeah. um, so we might not be seeing a significant, I mean, you know, we may see a little bit of uh, retracement because we're up against the resistance, but it might not be a really big retracement here. Yeah. So. And we could be trading sideways right on the resistance, right? Because this, yeah. this is a potential bull flag that is forming. So there's no trade here right now, in my opinion, for... Um, for Ethereum, let's have a look at the Ichimoku. I wouldn't even short this. Like I would, it's like a lot of people are preempting shorts, going, "Oh, we're at resistance. Let me short." And it's like, but you haven't had confirmation 
mm-hmm. that there is a bearish pattern, right? And and so sometimes that's a punt and it's gambling and sometimes it pays off, but a lot of the times it doesn't. You know, we could be creating another cup and handle here as well. So we probably need about another four hours at least to figure out where Ethereum is going. There is a dip in the Ichimoku cloud here. So in the next couple of hours, we might see a retracement and it may only come back down, uh, you know, to 4,595, hit this and come back up and and keep going up because that's very, very typical of, of Ethereum. We, I think right now we're waiting to see the pattern that's going to help us determine which way it's going to go for Ethereum. Yeah. And it really depends the time frame you're trading too. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, most of the people following us as, as well as Nicola and I are trading, tend to be trading longer term horizons. We're not scalpers. We're not doing the little mini day trades. So let's just be clear on that. You know, so for me, I'm agreeing with Nicola, this is a wait moment. I'm keeping my trades open. This market's looking pretty bullish at this moment. We're probably going to get some retracement here up against the resistance. Not enough for me to want to close my trades right now. Yeah. And for me, I actually closed it because I put in a take profit right Mm -hmm. here at uh, 4,900 or 4,800 and something. I can't remember exactly what it was. Um, So uh, I'm out of it. So it's, you know, I'm looking for the next, next best thing. And a lot of it's going to be your strategy, right? Teresa trades with much larger positions than me, um, and uh, and so what I'm doing is doing I'm doing a little bit more day trading so that I am creating that compounding effect, right? I go back in with the profit, and I'm compounding what I've got to put in larger positions on uh, on some of these coins. So, and that's just because I'm a little bit more conservative, um, and also I've got a bit more time on my hands. <laughs> Dot, let's have a look at dot. Let's do one, let's do the month. I like to do the month. Oh, look at that beautiful cup and handle right there. Can everybody see that? Cup, yeah. handle, neckline that we've broken above, target. Yeah, that's nice. 75. That's nice yeah. Yeah. So, and, and this is also a W, What's right? What's going on with your RSI? We can't see the RSI on that chart anymore. Oh, no, I know. I've, um, I've got some really weird things going on with TradingView. I'm in yeah. a battle with it. I feel like mm. I'm in Star Wars. So, <laughs> so yeah. there's confluence. Uh, oh, hang on a second. That's not true. Um, if we look at the neckline for the W which we haven't quite broken out of. Um, that's going to take us to $90. $90. Wow, that's a double from the $40 it was a week ago, I think it is. It's come down into the daily. Now that we've got the bigger picture, this could be an M forming here. So watch that. We could be getting a little bit of a pullback um so just watch that but that uh or this could be a bull pennant bull pennant yeah still bullish doesn't matter how you look at it so this is what we're teaching today when you've got all these different targets from all of these different bullish patterns which you tend to get in this last final impulse of the bull market, bullish pattern after bullish pattern with lots of different targets. This is where you take a limit profit on the way up and then add back in when we do a little bit of a retracement for the next target. And that way you're compounding the amount that you can um, make in the coin of the whole trade there. So that could take us up to 65,000. We're at the bottom of this pennant um this is on the daily so this is looks like this could be a good entry if you're trading dot yeah ichimoku on the four hourly is looking like we might just consolidate in here with a breakout around about the 17th of november which is the day after full moon is that right or is it date when's full moon this year is it uh, you know what i honestly don't know i think it's the 19th just yeah. before full moon on the 19th. So, okay. so it looks like we're going to trade possibly within here for a little while. Let's go on the one hour. 
Yeah, it looks like we're just going to have some consolidation between, you know, 49,000 and uh, 53,000 here for a few for a few days, unless, of course, obviously, if the market tanks and then it just drags everything down with it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, this could be a this could be a smaller ascend, um, ascending triangle. This is what you've got to watch out for because this this is a symmetrical triangle which has come in from the down, uh, coming in from the upside and down into it, which is bearish. So we could see a little bit of a retracement when you're putting trades and remember you're reacting to the direction that the price action is telling us it's going in. Mm -hmm. So you would wait for the breakout outside of this pattern and the retest either side of it in order to get a, a good position in here. So, that's so, that. so just remember guys, just to summarize some of the concepts we've been talking about, right? When you're, when you're trading a dominant bull trend like this, like lots of bullish indicators. So we know in general, um, Bitcoin especially is trending upwards and we're expecting a lot of the altcoins to follow, right? That as normally would be the case or the probability is that they will follow, right? Um, when we talk about where to take profit, that's distinct from where to close your trade, okay? Two different concepts. Take profit means you're taking some of your trade out close the trade means you're taking the whole trade out and what experienced traders do when it's a dominant bull trend is at these targets we take a percentage of the trade out and then when it retraces if you're still expecting the dominant direction to be upwards you're adding sometimes more back than what you took out to increase the size of the trade so yeah. if at the take profit you remove 30 percent when you come back down to the retracement, you might be adding 50% back in to slowly increase the size of the trade as we're moving upwards. So it's a good idea to have a strategy and determine what percentages you're comfortable with. Totally, yeah. Um, love for you to join us over at Discord for our daily TA. So if you go over to the Discord server and then you put in Conscious Crypto, you'll find us there. So just one last thing on DOT. See the lagging span, this purple line here, the lagging span on the Ichimoku cloud, that is under the cloud. And also the conversion line is below the baseline. It should be the other way around. Red should be at the bottom, green should be at the top for a full-on bullish um, momentum. And, and we've got a, a, a descending um, green Ichimoku cloud ahead of us. So that's suggesting that we're going to consolidate inside of this pattern uh, the mm -hmm. smaller pattern with inside of the bigger pattern for a few more days yet uh, before we get a massive breakout. Um, yeah, that's a wait pattern for sure. That's a, that's a wait and put your wait put your see. buy orders in at the you know at the um, at the support lines. Um, Sheba knew, Teresa. I know that we uh, this is our lottery ticket. And yeah. what's really good about Shiba and you is that the community is really supporting this and propping this up in a way that uh, Dogecoin had lost, you know, like more value. And that, and I think Shiba have looked at that and gone, you know what, we need to build out a network. We need to build out some kind of infrastructure to make this more than a meme coin. So if you're over and you look at what's happening at Shiba Swap and and all and the you know and all sorts of other things that are happening around the community. I think that's going to bode well for Sheep compared to Doge, which is just a flat out meme coin, right? But what we need to look at here is that we had such a huge pull, um, a, a huge drive up, right? Without yeah. a major correction that I think we're getting that correction very slowly now. And what we need to watch out for is, is this a descending triangle in which case, we're going to come down and we're going to do what Doge did and lose a tremendous amount of value, come all the way down to, uh, you know, losing a zero and uh, adding a zero rather and coming down to 772. Or is this a symmetrical triangle, <laughs> which is a continuation pattern, which means that we could come down to the correction at around 4668 before breaking to the upside and heading up towards uh, 90, 9002 with the four zeros in front of it, right? What, what, what are we going to do here? 
And it's very difficult to say uh, at this stage because we've just been um, slowly going down. Look at all those red candles on the daily. This is also a head and shoulders zone. And that head and shoulders is going to take us to, we're, depending on where it breaks out, obviously, these targets will change if we break out earlier or break out later, seven, eight, eight, nine. So let's go down and have a look at the four hour. Yeah, look, very clear head and shoulders there, very nice. So we need to, and we've got, uh, we've got till the 12th of November. So next couple of days to decide, are we going up or are we going down? So uh, I would be waiting to see what it, which, which line it breaks, <laughs> the resistance line or the support line. And then on the one hourly, I don't think we're going to get any other clues on the one hourly. Let's bring in the Ichimoku. Yeah, Ichimoku is um, looking like we could get another dump here. And it could go down to this line here. Look, I mean, this looks like this is a bear flag. So we're slowly going down. Look at that. What's interesting, Teresa, is that see how we've been going down. This is all. This is very, very nicely lined up, like it's touching a really nice, clear tr downward trajectory. So it's very orderly, which is not like a meme coin. Meme coins are usually disorderly. So I find that I don't know what that means. I just find that interesting. Yeah. So here we go. We yeah. could be heading down to four eight two zero. So these are nice, prop, you know, buying opportunities to look for RSI we're a bit overbought and we've got the CM Williams VIX fix which is a combination of the Bollinger Bands the moving averages and what have you uh, showing that we're about to swing to the upside um, but not without pot potentially coming down a little bit more let's bring in the um, it's just know. important to remember when we're dealing with altcoins too that their market cap is pretty small so when we're looking at patterns and how to trade the patterns, they often don't have sufficient market cap to perform the way a pattern would normally probabilistically perform. Yeah, that's true. So that's just always important to remember. Yeah. Um, the patterns are more an indication of what direction that we're thinking it's most likely to head. But yeah. sometimes the, the coins ignore the patterns altogether. So that's always important to keep in mind. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, okay, I think cool. Shiba is still looking like a pretty good lottery ticket here. So I'm hanging on to mine. Yeah, yeah, it is. I think long term it is. Um, and, and certainly um, I'm going to be holding on to millions of sheep <laughs> for four to eight years. Yeah, because you never know that could become multi million dollars. And I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to throw that away. Uh, you know, when you can just put a really small amount into Shiba Nu and in four to eight years time, if it's still around, um, then you could get a really big cash in, uh, you know, just for the sake of a couple of hundred bucks, right? And that's not really much to lose because you'd make it up on something else if it doesn't. So that's why we call it a lottery ticket. Um, so I think that's it. Let's just check in with Bitcoin before we leave. Yeah, it's just trucking along, coming along sideways, doing a bit of a consolidation after this big move which happens when we get these big moves, we get some consolidation. So we just wait and see for the direction. But generally speaking, we do have room to go up even more for Bitcoin. So I wouldn't be shorting this, Teresa. I, I wouldn't short anything between now and the end of the bull yeah, run. Just, I, wouldn't I wouldn't be shorting short. at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And like, the reason Unless for that you're a scalper or a day trader, that's... Exactly, and you know yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't short for a couple of reasons. Number one, if you have a look at all of the short patterns play out, hardly any of them have reached their target. And number two, when they reverse, they reverse quickly. So yeah. if you're not scalping, i.e., sitting on top of that trade, watching it like a hawk and moving when it moves, uh, you know, within a short period of time in the day, then, uh, you know, it could easily you turn on you while you, you at work or you're going to make yourself a cup of tea. They had that happen. <laughs> Made a cup of tea and. <laughs> yeah. 
Cool. Yeah, no, Okie dokie. Well, that's it from us. Remember, we are uploading tutorial videos every day. And when we get questions from you guys, we're happy to make videos on that. And uh, you can see um, you can see those by just going over to our homepage, checking out our playlist, and most importantly, subscribing and hitting that bell, clicking all so that you get notified when we're uploading and also being part of our community. Uh, we would really appreciate that. We are uh, accepting coffee. If you want to buy us a cup of coffee, the logo for that is on either the banner on our homepage for YouTube or in the link below. You can use that app to um, you know, throw us a bit of change. And what we do with that coffee money is it goes into the infrastructure projects around the community that we are developing here in Costa Rica, uh, which helps the farmers, it helps the women that go shopping up in the mountains, uh, not, not spraying their ankles and <laughs> because of their walking on mud roads with potholes and what have you. Uh, very exciting infrastructure projects. More importantly, it really helps bring tourists in the area, which bring, really has a significant impact on the uh, economy because, you know, people are afraid to go where there's not good roads. So um, okay. if any of you want to find out more about our community, I'm going to actually drop the link uh, to our website in the chat. So you're welcome to just go check us out. Um, we're developing a conscious, sustainable model here. Um, centered around a learning-based community. So we're, we've got a retreat center going and um, starting to host retreats next year. So lots of fun things happening. We're just uh, taking webinars on how to do food forests too. So yeah. um, thanks for all your support of the community. Um, feel free to tell people about it if you know they're moving to Costa Rica. Yeah. And, uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on the next call. Totally. And mo most importantly, click the like button. Help us yes. out with the uh, YouTube overlords. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and until Twitter next time. Oh. No, before we go, our Twitter, our Twitter was suspended. Oh, no, I didn't hear that. Yeah, well, because oh, they suspended, like, MM Crypto gets his Twitter suspended, like, every other month, right? And I think BitBoy Crypto. So that's kind of like, oh, yay, we're part of the club. We've got our Twitter. You must be saying something important. They suspended our Twitter account. Too fun. Okay. That's, why we're on, that's why we're on Discord, guys. All of the value is in Discord. You've got to get over there and be part of our daily TA there. Yeah. <laughs> and okay, so meet again. Trade consciously. We'll see you all next time. Bye, guys. Nice.